Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Foolishly, I'm filming several videos simultaneously, so I have to use the handy-dandy Hollywood clapboard to figure out which video is which when I go back and look at the thumbnails. As with most of my stuff, I bought this from Axeman. Anyway, today we're trying to follow up on a couple prior videos where I was experimenting with the Geostationary Operating Environment Satellite, or GOES, specifically GOES East, which is the one I can see most easily from my house. That one has a really nice view of North and South America. It's centered over the equator and it gets basically half of the Earth in its view. There's also a GOES West satellite that sits over the Pacific Ocean, and those are two of the main NOAA or United States Weather Agency satellites that are accessible to people like me, experimenters with old satellite dishes and other amateur antennas. Now I first looked at images from these satellites with a modified direct TV dish with some tin foil and cardboard added to it. That's from a video quite a while back. I'll try to throw a link up here. Then I started using a larger C-band satellite dish that another ham, uh, Chandler, in town here had given to me. I also tried a smaller dish, uh, also from Chandler, a little 29-inch uh, originally 5.8 gigahertz fixed wireless dish for uh, kind of business band Wi-Fi and I had really mixed luck with that. I was trying to use it for low earth orbit satellites, I was also trying to see if I could get GOES satellites with it and I didn't get much at all with it. However, in the meantime I've come up with a different antenna feed and I want to give that another try. And the feed that I'm using on this dish, the main antenna element that the reflector is bouncing the signals back to, is this horrible thing made out of coat hangers and putty. I built this years ago as a 70 centimeter ham radio antenna and I pulled it out again later on to modify into an L-band satellite antenna by wire clipping down all these coat hangers to be smaller. That way they resonate in a microwave frequency versus a UHF frequency. Now I also want to compare that to my Cantenna. This is um, similar to what I used on the very first GOES antenna I set up, that direct TV dish. And this is just a coffee can with a wire in it, antenna mount. Um, this is similar to what people used to use in the early 2000s to get free Wi-Fi from their neighbors, but scaled uh, up a little bit for microwave frequencies in the L-band, which is actually a slightly lower frequency than Wi-Fi, so the can is a little bigger than you'd use for Wi-Fi. So here's what my signal looks like on 1694 megahertz with that UHF stick antenna that's been modified down. It's not a great signal, but it's enough to get occasional frames and it's enough to get a little bit of data from the satellite. Next, I'm gonna swap this feed horn onto the dish and see what that looks like in comparison to the stick antenna. So I'm just double checking my Cantenna tuning using the Nano VNA version two. Uh, this one goes up to three gigahertz so I can measure microwave frequency antennas. We're looking at the SWR and it seems to be minimized about one to 1.04, right at that 1680, 1690 megahertz. So I'm gonna call that just about perfect. These are fantastic little antenna tuning devices. Again, this is the uh, VNA Model 2, and there are a few of these online. They're about $50, $60 on Amazon or eBay. As I've said before, I don't understand all the functions. I mainly use them as an SWR meter. So here's what the Cantenna feed looks like attached to the dish. And here's what our signal looks like on SDR++. We're definitely getting a stronger signal with this rig than we were with the little stick antenna. After recording the signal from Goes East for a few minutes and then running that through the sat dump software, we get some of these outputs. So I've jammed the stick antenna onto our smaller dish. I'm not quite sure if it's going to work because this dish is like a quarter the size of the other one, but we're going to give it a shot. As usual, I'm using my Sawbird Plus Goes LNA filter, and that will amplify and filter down to the specific frequency range we're looking at, that 1680 to 1710 megahertz. Then we need to get our dish aimed at the satellite, and this one is light enough that I can put it on a motorized mount. And my workstation has gotten a little more complicated here. We've got the Cyberdeck, which has the pan tilt zoom controls for that smaller antenna rotor. And then we've got this other laptop, which seems to be working a little better with some of the radio stuff. So we're kind of switching back and forth between these for different tasks. So with the little dish with that modified ground plane stick antenna, I can see the DCS channel from the GOES satellite, but I can't see the HRIT channel. Uh, that last one is the one that actually has the images, it actually has the full disk view of the Earth, and I'm not getting much at all for signal on here. 
the DCS channel, that's like stream gauges, other earth sensing equipment. Uh, when you drive by a river and you see a little box with a satellite antenna on top, that's bouncing up to the GOES satellite. It's measuring the river level, temperature, things like that. So I can see some of that stuff, but it's not super interesting because just a bunch of raw stream data. Right now we're just trying to get those weather images off the satellite, and that works fine with the big dish here, but I'd like to be able to do it with the little dish. And Chandler said he was able to do it with this little dish, so I'm going to keep messing around until hopefully we can use this to receive those geostationary satellites. So that big cantenna is working pretty well on the big dish, but that thing is far too big to stick on that little 30 inch dish. That would just block half the signal and be top heavy. I have a miniature Pringles can here, which I'm just dying to turn into an antenna. Now, I don't know if this is gonna work at all. It's really small, it's probably not very efficient, but I'm gonna run this through the cantenna calculator, which will probably just give me errors because the diameter on this is far too small, but we're gonna try it anyway. That didn't work at all, so we're going to try another design. We're going to try to do a tiny little dipole. That didn't work either, so we're trying whatever this is. Well, the last one kind of worked, so now we're trying this idea. That one was only mildly better, still not enough to get a good signal, so now we're trying a tiny, tiny Yagi antenna. Now, this little Yagi seems like it might actually be working, or at least it's getting a stronger signal than some of the other ones I tried. And when I run the recording through SatDump, it's actually trying to sync, so we might be able to get something if we leave it here long enough. I don't have a sponsor for this video, but I am drinking a refreshing Staxman beer from Axman Surplus and Blackstack Brewing. Well, that was a pretty marginal signal, but we did get a couple partial images out of it. So that Yagi antenna definitely has potential. It just needs a little further adjustment. Great, now the cops are after me. All right, well that actually worked. We got some full disk images. We got some more weather messages and yeah, we're getting a pretty good signal with the 30 inch dish with that little hacked together Yagi antenna. I'll throw up an overlay of this image and some of the other ones we got just now. So we've got North and South America, invisible light, infrared, various other bandwidths. It's looking pretty good. We've also got some close-ups of particular areas of interest, all the regular stuff that you get from the GOES satellite, and we were able to get it on the small dish. So that's much more portable. If I want to use that dish out at Sandland or on the road or whatever, I can throw that in the back of the car. I can take that somewhere, set it up, and download weather images from the geostationary weather satellites at any time in any place. So I tried a whole bunch of different antenna designs and this was the feed that worked the best. A miniature Yagi, uh, elements about 22 millimeters apart from each other, center dipole, 83 millimeters in total, director front element, 66 millimeters, rear reflector element, 87 millimeters, and the, just a little pigtail of cable. That might not be the best or most efficient Yagi. The original measurements I was going for were about the same, but with a 78 millimeter director or first element. Uh, however, this one with a 66 millimeter director seemed to work okay. And then as usual, I'm using an RTL SDR Blog V3, software defined radio unit, that's that silver thing at the top, and then a Nuelex Sawbird Plus Goes filter LNA amplifier, that's the thing at the bottom on the right. I will throw links to all those in the description, and as I'm now an Amazon affiliate, if you buy one of these through my Amazon link, I'll get a small kickback. All right, I'm glad I was finally able to use this 30 inch dish. I wasn't quite sure if it was going to work for this, but after a lot of fiddling around, we got it to connect to that GOES satellite. We were able to download some stuff, and that's a good proof of concept. I have a lot of things I could do to improve that. I could figure out a more permanent feed at the front. I could improve my aiming system, my mounting system, but for now, I think this is working okay. And I'm adding it to my ever-growing pile of obsolete satellite antennas over here. Stay tuned to see what we do with this dish, any of these other dishes, or that big C-band satellite dish. I've got lots more things planned in the future. I just have to find the time to actually get around to doing them. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.